tips, tips, tips with Tony. Tips, tips, tips with Tony. All about nutrition from your favorite dietitian. Everything you need to digest in your mind. Tips, tips, tips with Tony. Tips, tips, tips with Tony. Making you healthier one bite at a time. With Tony. With Tony. With Tony. I think that's really common. I think so many of us have been put into boxes and we kind of go through the motions and we do what we're quote unquote supposed to do. And we, and we just kind of fit the mold. Like Mm -hmm. we, everybody else's expectations of us, like that's what we show up for. And that's what we try and fill our life with. And that's, I feel like a recipe for, oh my gosh, (laughs) a monotony, exhaustion, burnout, like no joy, like just all of those things that nobody wants to feel, but you kind of get to a place where you're like, well, crap, that's my life. Um, So I'm huge on heart tugs. I'm huge on just really looking inside and saying, what what is my heart telling me right now? Like, Mm -hmm. what are these thoughts that kind of, they kind of like flutter by and they're really easy to miss. But those are the things that like, if you pay attention, you're like, oh, wait, I just got this thought. And if I, if I kind of dig into that a little bit, it leads me here and then it leads me there. And then it, and that's how you kind of get to where you're supposed to go um, and what you're supposed to be doing and who you are becoming and all of that stuff throughout life. So I would just say, really pay attention to those things because we all have them. They're all coming. They're all like inside of our heads and they're little like afterthoughts, but you push it off and you're like, Oh, that's crazy. Oh, that's, that's dumb. Who am I? Mm -hmm. Who am I to want that? Who am I to, to, to do that? I don't have what it takes, whatever. We have all these stories, but those heart tugs and those thoughts are what really can help point you in the next direct, like the direction of the next step. And you don't have to know all the things you just need to know the next step. Like let's just take the next step. Yeah. I completely agree. I think a lot of people actually on purpose are keeping themselves busy and distracted. So they don't even hear those heart tugs louder, you know, because it does the overwhelm comes in. It's like, now I have to act. What am I going to do? How am I going to do it? You don't have to have that part figured out. So I'm glad that you said that. It's just, just lean into it a little bit though. Just like, just a little yeah. bit. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Lean it into it. Yeah, yep. definitely. So, okay. Other question I, I need to know because you're a mom of five <laughs> and you run a business. How old are your kids from what ages to what ages? I am assuming one yes. is nine. So, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> one, is, one is 10. So oh, 10. Okay. the oldest is 12. Yeah. 12, okay. 10, six, three, 10 months. 10 months. What a yeah, little babe. So okay. Wait. Okay. <laughs> so, so, wow. So you have a, a newborn basically, you know, I know they're technically not newborn at before after six months, but it's a newborn. It's a, not even one. Okay. Um, so from one to 12 mm-hmm. and okay. I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. Cause I, I, I was, we were on your podcast earlier. I was like, I'm a, I'm a half a mom. Cause I'm a step mom. We have her like, I would say 60% of the time, but still like she has her own mom. I'm just like, I do all the extra stuff. So I'm like, it's You're a the lot. bonus. I, yeah. The bonus, but like the bonus five. Okay. It's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. But, I know. But not, but, okay. Not just, but the, that's the thing though. Like, I, and listen, I, and I want to make sure people hear, I'm not judging or criticizing or anything when I, when I'm, I get the comments from people that are, moms of one or two or three or anything and they're like I can't make my I can't it's just there's too much going on I don't have time to work out I don't have time to eat healthy I don't have time I don't have time I don't have time um and I think that you do a really great job of kind of showing like is it about time or is it about like mindset and priorities and habits and routines and you know so I would love for you to speak to that and I just want people to know that like everyone's life is different I know we all have different accesses and privileges and up opportunities and all that but I think you you really did show like when there's a will there's a way yeah you know and and there's never any judgment ever. When I when I get women that reach out to me and they're like, gosh, I don't know how you do it all and da-da-da. And I just can't even like keep up with what I have going and let alone 
I'm like, everybody is so different. Our lives will always be full. It'll, mm-hmm. Our plate will always be full. There will always be crap filling our schedule. There will always be things. So we as individuals have to be the boss of our own freaking lives. And we have to say, okay, that's great. Everything's getting thrown at me and I can either react or I can say, well, these are actually my priorities and I'm going to schedule these in first and then fill up the gaps with some of the other stuff. So that's what I think it comes down to is like, you'll make time for what's important to you. So if your health is important to you and you want to make time for it, we all have times. Heck, my workouts are freaking 20 minutes a day from home. You can't tell me you don't have time for that. And if you don't, then holy moly, we got to do some like clearing out. Like there's Mm -hmm. some stuff that is on your plate right now that doesn't probably doesn't need to be. Um, So it's really just getting honest with ourselves about are we interested in maybe working on our goals? Or are we really committed to working on our goals? Are we really committed to feeling our best? We're we really committed to whatever. And for me, it really did. <laughs> I mean, I w- when people are out there living healthy lifestyles for no reason at all, just because they want to be healthy, I have so much admiration for them because it took me making it my job for me to show up for it every right. day. Right. It took me being like, okay, I want to help other people. Therefore, I need to help myself first. I need to show up. I need to build habits. I need to make this my normal so that I can help other people because they're never going to trust me if I'm like not doing the things, right? So when people are out there just doing it just because, I'm like, you are amazing. You are incredible like goals. For me, that wasn't how it was. So I needed to make it my job so that I could prioritize it. I could build habits around it. I could put it at the top of my to-do list and to-be list so that I could be a healthy person instead of just wanting to do healthy things. And that made the difference for me. Um, And then the mindset work. I mean, I didn't dig into any of this stuff until I was a coach because it's part of what we do. And I'm like, holy crap, why did I not know about this stuff earlier? Why did I not dig into just the power of your thoughts and the power of your um, your habits and all of this stuff that we carry through life, the baggage, the stories, the, the stuff that makes life so much harder? If we don't do the work to get rid of that, to reprogram our brains, to really rewrite our, our story and our future, then we're leaving it at the hands of just what is happening to us. Mm. And that is not something that I'm willing to just let happen because we yeah. all see the world, right? <laughs> we all yeah. know what is going on. Yeah. And time flies. Time flies, oh guys. I mean, and this is where it's just not to put the pressure on. But if you're in the same spot that you were in three years ago, two years ago, last year, the year before, 10 years ago, whatever, or worse, like you, something's got to give, something's got to change. You're going to have to do something different, you know? And so I think, thank you also too, for sharing that. Cause I, I, as well, I, I actually, you know, I'm a dietitian, so it's not that I even like, I really do just live to live a healthier lifestyle and lead by example. But at the same time, I, you know, if I didn't have my platform, I probably wouldn't have been reminded of it and had to, you know, incorporate it and teach about it. And constantly by me teaching clients, I'm reminding myself. And because I'm reminding Absolutely. myself, it keeps me out of like those disordered behaviors and all that to say, um, I think that's also important here that I don't want you to follow. Cause when you follow Micah on Instagram, you're going to be like, Holy crap. Wow. And like, you know, like how does she do it all? How does she balance it all? But you can get caught. Don't get caught up in the comparison instead realize number one, what she just said, me and her do this for a living. Right. So we have the privilege of like, almost like it's part of our work day per se, you know, like, mm-hmm. so remember that at the same time, we all have time <laughs> and we can make also make time for other things that part of our business that have nothing to do with healthy eating and exercise. We could, you know, it could yep. be about, you know, connecting and email and whatever. All that to say, um, you can learn a lot, but never get caught up in the comparison. And like, what, remember, you could always find like, what does that look like for me? So for yeah. Micah, it's 20 minutes a day. For you, it might be 10 minutes a day of working out, whatever it is, you know? Um, so just be mindful of that. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I think we, we were talking offline and then you kind of mentioned it here. Um, 
kind of finding the balance within the do it at all. And I think you mentioned to me, I don't know if we were recording or not. I don't think we were, um, but maybe like with like some delegations and stuff. So it's like, it appears like you're doing it all right, but you're Mm -hmm. also kind of smart about what you choose to take on and what you choose to kind of divvy up. So can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, I love that because I feel like this idea that you probably feel like you're drowning and then you go to Instagram and you're like, these women have their shiz together. They are doing it all. Their house is clean. Their kids are in order. Their life is straight. They're healthy. Their business is thriving. Holy freaking crap. Whatever. One, no one is ever doing it all. So if you see any successful entrepreneur out there, they have a team. They have a team of people behind them that are helping, whether it's their business, their life, their whatever it is. If you don't have a team, what are you actually doing with your life? So mm-hmm. that's that's what number one is. They're never doing it by themselves. I don't do it by myself. As I love you, my daughter. <laughs> oh, that's it's I, so funny. It, <laughs> my, my, my cat needed to get out at the same time. Your daughter is like, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Good timing. Um, I mean, as I'm doing this nine years into building a business, I have help in every area. I have virtual assistants. I have an operations manager. I have a nanny helper that comes five hours a day, five days a week to help with my littlest kids so I can have structured time to build my business and do what I love and strong boundaries. When I'm working, I'm working. When I'm not, I'm not. Like I am unplugged, phone away, dialed out. So it's like, and then, and then we homeschool and that's a whole nother thing, but I don't do it. I have a homeschool helper that comes in for three hours a day, four days a week while I'm working. So it's like, no one is ever doing it all, but you can absolutely do what is most important to you. And that's what I'm super passionate about is I think as moms and as women, we wear that busy badge of honor. Like I've got to do it all. I've got to be it all. I've got to do all the things and be at all the places and no one else can do it as good as me. I learned really quickly that I was either going to have to lower my goals Mm. and lower my standards or learn how to delegate. And Mm. so the first thing that I delegated was house cleaning. I'm like, well, I actually hate cleaning, but I do it all because I feel like that's what a stay at home mom does, right? I have to do that. This is what I was talking about earlier. If you put yourself in this box, good moms have a clean house and they cook the food and they do the things and whatever. And pretty soon I'm like, wait a second. I don't find fulfillment from cleaning. I actually hate it, but I love having a clean house. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I'm willing to let someone else do and I'll pay them. I love having certain things done in my business, but I don't have to do certain things. So I'm going to pay someone. I love that my kids are getting played with and taken care of and watched over while I'm pouring into my business and empowering women. Like those are certain things that I was willing to give up in order to continue to grow. And I know there's someone who out there who needs to hear this, but I'm a stay at home mom. And I am a stay at home mom because I want to be with my kids all the time. That was me too. Until I had my third child. I love all my children equally, but my third child was really hard, really hard. And so as I was building my business in the mom cracks, which is how I did it the first couple of years, I was doing everything. We didn't delegate anything. That's when I'm like, I am going to lose my mother living mind trying to do it all. And so it did come to a point where I'm like, what am I willing? What am I willing to delegate a few hours a day? Mm -hmm. So that I cannot feel like I have to be plugged in working all the time in the cracks of motherhood. Yeah, that served me far more than my ego. And it was an ego thing. Mm -hmm. I just didn't want to give up the reins. I didn't want to say that I needed help. But you just got to be true to who you are. And this is this goes back to alignment. Like, don't feel like you have to do what Sarah's doing because that's just what works for her. Like, what do you actually want? Don't feel guilty for wanting certain things. Don't feel guilty for needing to do certain things in your life. If it's helping you live your best life in all the areas that are most important to you, then girlfriend, go for it. That's what I have to say about that. 
<laughs> yeah, no, amen. And honestly, I think what the other thing that's going to probably help people is like, listen, it's depending on where you're at in your life. You might have to do it all for a temporary part of your life in a temporary time, totally. but you have to decide like, is this the life that I want to live? Like, is this how I, I can't do this forever? So if you want something different, you're going to have to, you might, maybe you need to get a second job. Maybe you need a side hustle. Maybe you need to work harder to get a promotion or maybe you need to, um, do, I don't know, maybe you don't have control over your finances. Maybe you're spouse does, maybe you need to have a conversation, whatever it is, but you have, you need to also decide what do you want your life to look like, right? Where, you know, where do you want to go? Where do you want to be in six months from now, a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, um, and create that vision, right? So like, I know, Michael, you talk a lot about vision. Um, So what does it mean to have clarity around your vision? And why do you feel like that's so important? Yeah, I'm obsessed with vision. This is something that I learned from Bob Proctor. Um, a couple of years ago and I went to his live event and I did one of his programs and it literally was one of the biggest life changers for me because it just helped me get so clear on kind of, this is kind of like all encompassing on those heart tugs, on my strongest desires, on who I wanted to become, on the life I wanted to create, on the legacy I wanted to leave. Like it helps you just really think big picture and then get super dialed in and aligned with your daily choices. Are these moving me closer to who I want to become on the life that I want to build? But if we don't have a target, we have nothing to shoot for. We have nothing to really point us in the right direction. So essentially that's what your vision is. And it's all encompassing. Like I have, I have a vision story workshop that I can help people get access to um, at the end of this, but it really goes back to, fully, holistically, your life, your priorities, what's important to you, health, your your hobbies, your family, your faith, your relationships, your business, your income, your impact, all of those things, you craft this vision of, of what you want to work towards and what you're creating. And then it's so much easier to align your actions to those things. And you don't get all lopsided because you're not just focusing on your business goals. And then your relationship is falling to crap and your kids are struggling and you feel like your whole life is failing, but your business is successful. Well, great. That's not success. So like, let's be successful as humans. And that's what the vision work really helped me to do. And what I help other women to do and dudes, but um, is really just get aligned with what you want most, what that looks like, what that feels like. And then helps you bring all of that stuff to life. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so powerful. So powerful. Okay. Well, we have, we're almost done for today, which I'm sad about, but is there anything before (laughs) we wrap up that you need like thing topics or last minute kind of comments that you want to leave for our listeners? You know, oh my gosh, there's so many things (laughs) I well, just for one want to say, wherever you are in life, like there's a reason you're here and everything that you've experienced up to this point has happened for you. So Mm -hmm. understanding that and that one little shift of like when trials come, when hardships come, when, when you're struggling on whatever, there's a lesson there. It is there for a reason. It is there for you to serve you, to help you grow, to help you refine all of that stuff. And so releasing that idea or that thought of why is this happening to me? Why did I have to go through this? Why this? That victim mentality is so disempowering. So yeah. really just that little shift of, okay, how is this happening for me? Why is this in my life right now? How can I learn? How can I grow? How can I bless others? Because I went through this trial. When you shift that, you will literally change. It's like putting these goggles on and you change how you see the world. You change how you see your life. And it helps you not just after the struggle or the trial or the hardship, it helps you through it. And that's the hardest part for so many people is like, well, I'm in the depth of a trial. I can't even see a bright light. Like if you shift that focus, you'll be able to, you'll be able to see the blessing. You'll be able to see the message and the mess, all of those things it really is a thing and it's so powerful. So I don't know why that was on my heart. Maybe someone Mm. needed to hear that. 
in this moment, but I'll just leave that with them. Yeah, no, that was beautiful. And it's so true. The message that keeps coming up more recently, I feel like there's always like a trend when you're like talking to clients and stuff. The message more recently is like, it's messy in the middle. Like it really is. Absolutely. And so, you know, we have to d- remind ourselves of the vision and like why we're doing what we're doing and, you know, remind ourselves that like the pain is temporary, the discomfort, it's temporary, you know, but you have to push through to, to get to the other end and, and you will, and it's always worth it, right? You've gotten through, we, we can do hard things. And every time we get through it, we're like, wow, that was so worth it. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. So, I love that. Well, thank you so much for being here. Where can people find you and connect with you? Um, mostly Instagram. You can find me at Micah Folsom fit in my link there in the bio. It has like everything and everything that you can find me and work with me and connect with me and whatever. I do have some goodies for your people. If they go ah! to Micah Folsom fit.com slash D Y C. Okay. okay. Micah Folsom fit.com slash D Y C that's do your crap. Like short for do your crap. My podcast. Oh, um, I they, wanted to talk about that. <laughs> oh, I meant no, to say, good. I completely forgot to tell you, like ask, why did you create your podcast? And oh, like I, I could share that at the end if you want. Now, but, the, now yeah. the quick plug. Okay. <laughs> go there and put in your email. That'll get you access to my emails where I can really structure how I can best serve you. So you'll get the first email that comes through and there's three different goodies that you can get, but depending on what you need, whether it's on your health journey, whether you're building a business, whether you're a mom that's trying to like simplify life and find more joy. So make sure you open the first email so you can get the goodie that's best for you. And then I can show up weekly in your inbox with inspiration and nuggets and just value to make your life sweeter. Amazing. I love it. I love it. So yeah. So guys, if you listen to podcasts, make sure you check out Do Your Crap (laughs) Podcast. Quickly, what can people expect from listening to the podcast? Yeah. So that my podcast came about, I work with entrepreneurs. I work with women who are building businesses. And so it's a lot of mindset. It's a lot of simple habits to just really enhance your life. Um, I focus a lot on entrepreneurs, on helping them um, build smarter and not work harder and just finding joy in the journey and all of the things. So that's mostly what it's about. I do have some nutrition stuff and health stuff and all those things on there as well, but it's kind of this little happy mix and mingle. Love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. (laughs) Amazing. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here, guys. Thank you for listening. If this episode resonated with you at all, take a screenshot and tag us on your story. I'm at tips underscore with uh, underscore Tony with an I. And then Mika, your Instagram really quick. Just say it again. Yeah. At Micah Folsom Fit. M-I-C-A-H. Okay, great. So Micah Folsom Fit on Instagram. Make yep. sure you tag us both. If you're not subscribed to the Tips to Tony podcast, definitely hit the subscribe button. A new episode comes out every Tuesday and Thursday. And when you're subscribed, you don't miss a beat. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you guys for listening. As always, this is Tony Marinucci, your registered dietitian, helping you get healthy one bite at a time.